Hallelujah. Well, you got your Bible this morning. Lift your Bible towards heaven and let's have our confessions. I thank God today for the Word of God. Today, my mind's alert. My mind's ready to receive the uncompromised, the unchanging, the infallible, indestructible seed of the Word of the living God. I am what the Word says I am. I can do what the Word says I can do. I can have what the Word says I can have. My Bible, oh, my Bible is God's Word speaking to me. Then look to your neighbor and say, neighbor, the Bible is God's Word speaking to you. So smile real big, be a doer of the Word, not just to hear the Word. All right, wave the Word around this morning. Thank God for the Word. Hallelujah, amen, amen. Oh, glory. Turn your Bibles to Mark's Gospel, chapter 11. Mark's Gospel, chapter 11. And um, we're leading up to Easter Sunday. They've designated a time every year that the nation and the world can celebrate the death, the burial, and the resurrection. Of course, you and I, the redeemed, we do that every day. Uh, but then we also, thank God, we do have a, a special day that is recognized. And so we're going to be leading up to that day, two weeks from the day, uh, Easter Sunday. And so I've titled this, The Promises. The Promises. Mark 11, 22, Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God or have the God kind of faith. For surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be thou removed, be cast to the sea, does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. See, I have whatever I say when I believe with all my heart. And then he says here, therefore I say to you, verse 24, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Father, I thank you for the word. I thank you for supernatural recall of the spirit and the word that you dropped into my heart to bring forth this lesson today. Lord, don't let it just be a lesson or just another message, but let it be the Holy Ghost moving into our hearts and giving us insight of really we can have what we say if we believe. But Lord, we know that's a promise from God. That is a promise from God backed up by the blood of Jesus Christ. Again, Father, we claim every soul for Jesus. Those that's watching on live stream today, we thank God that the Holy Spirit will minister to you right there where you're at, wherever it may be. May God continue to bless you in every area in this body of believers here this morning. In Jesus' name, that every needs met physically, financially, in every way. And everybody said amen, amen. in Jesus' name. Praise God. You know, uh, now before we go any further, come go with me to 1 Kings uh, chapter 8. 1 Kings chapter 8. As we get into the promises, talk about uh, God is who he says he is, and he will do what he says he will do. Amen. And if anybody is missing it, it's not God. Amen. God will God backs up his word. Yes. We need to know the, the God behind the promises. Are you listening to me? Yes. You need to know, we need to know the God behind the promises. Now, if, if I came down and, and, uh, and I promised my wife, I was going to do something for her. I don't think that she would ever take second thought for that, would you, honey? Would you believe I would do that? Now, why would she believe that I would do that? Because she knows me. She knows I am a man of my word. And when I say I'll do something and promise her I'll do it, then I'll do it. And the reason she's got that confidence, she can walk away from me and I can walk away from her and she's not even going to think about it again. She might think about, it. wonder what it's going to be. <laughs> maybe it was a promise of surprise, but maybe it's not an element of surprise. Maybe 
I told her I was going to do something for her, and I promised her I would do that. But when I walk away and she walks away and she's not going to ever think about that, she's not even going to be concerned about, it. well, I wonder if he's going to really do that for me. See, this is what the body of Christ is today when we pray and we ask God for some things and, and uh, we, we just wonder something, is he really going to do that for me? The reason that we have that question is because we don't really know the God that's behind the promise. We need to know the God that's behind the promise. And when he says, by his, his stripes, we are healed, that's a promise. That's a promise that's already been fulfilled 2,000 years ago. That's all been taken care of. Then he says also in Philippians 4, 19, my God shall, my God shall supply Hallelujah. all of my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. That's a promise. Amen. Now, in, in between the promises, there are stipulations. There's got to be some obedience involved in that. Because in Isaiah 1, 18, 19 says, if you're willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Not a maybe, not a possibility, not a but we shall eat the good of the land. I know the God that's behind the promise. We can have peace. We can rest at that. And that's what I'm, I'm believing God for the body of Christ uh, that will just rest in the word of God. When you get a word from God, when you hear the word of God, you just believe that word because it's a promise from God. Let me, let me just go ahead and say that every word from Genesis to Revelation is promises from God. Amen. Amen. Written, not just on paper with ink, but written from the tablets of the throne of God. Amen. Written by God the Father himself, put on paper by the Holy Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit instructed men of God to write these letters to us. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Amen. And it says here in 1 Kings chapter 8 and verse 56, blessed be the God who has given rest to his people Israel. We could also put our name there. Bless to his people, Victory Life Church, According to all, according, listen, according to all that he promised, that has not failed one word of all his good promises. Not one word has ever failed. Glory to God. That's shouting news right there. Yeah. To know that when we know the God behind the promise, know that he's never failed not to, not to fulfill one promise. God is who he says he is. Amen. In Titus 1, 2, it says, God is not a man that he can lie. He's not a man that he can lie. Aren't you thankful for that this morning? He is not a man. Yes. Signifying the fact that if he was a man, he's a, it's a good possibility he could tell a lie. Amen. It's a good possibility that you told a lie since you've been born again. Include all of us. From here all the way back. But God's never told a lie. God can't tell a lie. Because he is the El Shaddai. He cannot. He is Jehovah. He cannot and will not ever tell a lie. And so I just believe the Bible. I just believe the word of God. Go with me over here to 1 Corinthians. I mean 2 Corinthians chapter 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 20 says, For all the promises of God, we land some foundation today. For all the promises of God in him are yes, and in him amen. To the glory of God through us. All the promises of God in him are yes. And the word amen means let it so be. Yes. Let it so be. Yes, there's no no's when it comes to God backing out on his promise. It's all yes. I said all the word is yes. Amen. amen? Hallelujah. 
Glory to God. Look with me to 2 Peter, and let's look at chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1, let's begin reading with verse 2. It says, grace and peace be multiplied to you. Grace and peace be what? Multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Now, remember, remember this, we've talked about it over the years many times and talked about the word knowledge here. When you search that out in the Greek, it means uh, epinosis. It means having exact knowledge. And then the, uh, uh, the other part of that word in the Greek means gnosis. It means having knowledge in part. There are a lot of people that has knowledge in part and not full knowledge of who they are in Christ not really understanding the revelation of who they are. And we are all still learning. We're all still learning. I want to have epinosis, which is E-P-I-G-N-O-S-I-S, epinosis in the Greek, meaning exact knowledge, and then gnosis meaning knowledge in part. And that's where most Christians are today. They got just a little dab of doing. Just a little dab. Just know just enough to keep some people off of their back. <laughs> what, they, what the world saying is. Making you think they know more who they are. Amen. But I want to know exactly what the word says about me. I want to know that God. They all shout out the God that made the heavens and the earth. I want to know that God that created everything before there was anything. And I don't have to try to figure out how he existed or came into existence because if his word says he is God, then he is God. Amen. Amen. Paul says in Romans, if you just look around throughout the words, throughout the letters of Paul's writings and look out, he said, look at the trees. There's a God. Look at the sky. There's a God. Look at the moon, sun, stars. Man can't make that. Man can't make that. Amen. There's people now that's, that's, that's uh, creating life, trying to create life. But God says, here's the thing of it is, you may try to create life, but unless you've got my dirt, you ain't going to have no life to it. Even though if you make something out of dirt, Unless you've got my breath, my life that I breathe into the dirt, Amen. you're not going to have any life. So, so they talk about cloning all they want to. And they're cloning stuff. But see, the thing of it is, we've been cloned by the Holy Ghost. Amen. And see, our life is eternal when we receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. Now he says here, grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord as his divine power has given us all things. Glory to God. Divine power, not just power. Divine supernatural power has been given to you and I all things. Now what does all things mean? Look that up and it means all things. <laughs> all things has been given unto us that pertain to life. And the word life here in the Greek means zoe, meaning life as God has it, pertaining to life as God has it and godliness. Amen. Through the knowledge of him who's called us by glory and by virtue. Now verse four says, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises. Over to God. Given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Hallelujah. We escape the bad of the world through the knowledge of who we are in Christ Jesus because we have the divine nature, the supernatural nature of God living on the inside of us. 
That tells me I've got the promises of God when I receive Christ as my Lord and Savior. I have all the promises of God living in me. In other words, this whole word, this whole, the whole word moved into my house. All of God's promises lives in me. Amen. Then he says through epinosis, through exact knowledge, full knowledge, then we can pull that out of us. That's why it's important to read the Bible. Because when you read the Bible, you can point your finger at every scripture and say, that's in me. Amen. That is in me. People still reading, trying to get something from God when you've already got it from God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Now, Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. It says in Matthew 16, verse 13, when Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, who do men say that I am? Who do men say that I, the son of man am? And so they said, some say you're John the Baptist and some say that you're Elijah and others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And Jesus said to them, but who do you say I am? Who do you say then? Then Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Amen. The son of the living God. Peter says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Now, you know a little bit about Peter. When uh, Peter said he wouldn't deny Christ, he denied someone that he knew. He said, I know that you are the son of God. He went down and he denied Christ three times. And Christ told him, he said, you will deny him. He says, no, I won't. But he did deny him three times. But then we also find out that through our message on the journey of love, that, that Peter, Jesus told Peter, now after he was resurrected, he says, Peter, do you love me? Three times he says, do you love me? He said, feed my lambs. Feed my lambs. Do you love me? Feed my lambs. And so I'm bringing this point out to show you even though you know who you are and you have epinosis, you have exact knowledge, you can still at times deny God. How? Through denying the promises of God that's been set out for you. Amen. Now see, when you deny the word, you're denying God. Amen. You're no different. I am no different than Peter. When, when the word says do this or do that, if the word says we need to bring all of our tithes and we don't do that, then we are not trusting in the promise of God. Because if you really believe, and many of you do, if you really believe that God is who he says he is and will he, he will do what he says he will do, we would always run to be obedient to his word. Amen. 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 Peter says, Lord, I know who you are. <laughs> You're the son of God. Jesus answered and said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona. Flesh and blood didn't reveal this to you, but my father who is in heaven. Now, how did the father reveal this to Peter? He said, my father in heaven revealed this to you, Peter. How did he do that? The father didn't come down and talk to Peter. How did he reveal this? He revealed it through the life of Christ. He got epinosis, he got revelation, he got exact knowledge of who Christ was. And by getting that knowledge, he knew who Jesus was, that he was the Son of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even though he messed up, we go through the Word of God through, from the beginning all the way down uh, through the Word. And we'll find out there are many men in providence for one, miss God sometimes, lied to God. But God forgave them. God is a God of mercy. God is a God of love. And God is in the forgiving business. Amen. Amen. And don't say my breast is because I blew it. I messed up. Don't ever say my, my, my prom the promises uh, doesn't work for me anymore. Yes, it does. Amen. God never stops working for you. Amen. You can hinder the blessings. But if you'll get back on track, I like that, don't you? That's how good God is. We get right back on track. I mean, it puts the promises right back into motion. Let's keep the promise of God into motion. Keep it in the motion for us, for you and I. 
And he said, Jesus answered and said, Blessed are you, Simon. Amen. Then he says in verse 18, And also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Now, I know he's speaking to Peter here, but when you, now why did he say that to Peter? Because Peter says, I know you are the Son of God. When we say, I know he is the Son of God, I know he lives inside of me, then the gates of hell shall not prevail against me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even though we will make mistakes sometimes, but if we quickly repent, the gates of hell shall have no power or authority over you and I. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. I'm trying my best to calm down here because <laughs> the gates of hell should not prevail against you. Say the gates of hell, gates of hell should not prevail, should not prevail over, me. over me. In other words, the Greek says, or be victorious over you. Or be victorious over you. Why? Because Jesus conquered the gates of hell. When he died on that cross and he went to hell, he, he went in there, he marched into the corridors of hell. He walked, marched right up to Satan and snatched the keys of death, hell, and the grave away from Satan. Amen. Then he left hell, went over into the bosom of Abraham, which was a gulf fixed between. A gulf fixed between. I'm thinking that's a gulf with some type of water. Jesus already proved he could walk on the water. So when he left hell, went over to the bosom of Abraham, and he preached and said, I, I could just imagine in my own mind, I don't know exactly how it happened. You don't know, and I don't know. But I've got my own, own ideas how things possibly could have happened. He walks right in there to hell and snatched him away from Satan, got the keys, walked over into the bosom of Abraham, and all those that have died up to that point, believing in the coming Messiah, believing in the coming Christ, looking to the cross. But he says, now, here's the keys. I've been to the cross. I've already suffered for you. You've been waiting here all these years. Now, I'm going to take you to heaven. That's my promise to you. That's my promise to you. I promise you in the word that if you look to me, even though you lived under the law, you had to live by the law of the Ten Commandments, you had to obey these laws one by one, be uh, sacrificed every year, get your sins removed every year. Those of you, you looked to me, you went through all the rituals. My promise is here to take you to heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The moment we die, on this side of the world, on this side. The moment we die, if the Lord should tarry, we're all going to die. It's appointed unto man wants to die. Appointed unto man wants to die. But I got peace. How about you? I got peace. Praise God. But the moment you die, you don't die. You just take off the rub of flesh. And we don't go to the bosom of Abraham. We don't go to paradise. We go to the kingdom of heaven. I mean, boom, right there. Hallelujah. I mean to tell you that ought to make every child of God shout. Be at peace. Don't be in fear because you know the promises of God. And you know the God that backs his promises. He says, if you confess me, if you believe in my heart and confess me as your Lord and Savior, he says, if you believe that, confess that, I'll take you to heaven. I've got peace with that. Amen. I got peace with that. Praise God. He didn't make a lot of rules and regulations with it. He says, if you'll just believe me, yes. oh, glory, Hallelujah. I'll take you to heaven. That's a promise. That's a promise. Amen. In Luke 10, turn with me, please. Now, let me finish reading this. Verse 19. I'll give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. There's the keys. Whatever you bind on earth, notice where it starts. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound, or I like to say taken care of, business taken care of in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth 
We'll be loose in heaven or business is taken care of in heaven. It starts right here. Now, over here in Luke chapter 10, in verse 19, I can quote it to you, but I want you to turn and look at it. Luke 10, verse 19 says, Behold, I give you authority. I give you authority. That's a promise. That's a promise, church. He said, Behold, this is, this is written in egg, in, 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 in hot sauce, red. Hot sauce. I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions, demons and devils. And over all the power, over, he didn't finish there. He didn't just stop there. He said, over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Oh, glory. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. That's a promise from God. That's a promise from my heavenly father. And the blood of Jesus has come to back it up. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And all he requires of us, believe. Believe. Just believe. Praise God. Look at your neighbor and say, all you need to do is just believe. Hallelujah. Amen. Believe, confess, say what the word says. When we get into a tight spot, whether it's financially or physically or family or whatever it may be in life, we always need to respond. Somebody said, well, how are you doing in your finances or how are you doing with your family or how are you doing with your physical? So always respond to the word. You ought to say, the word says, by stripes I'm healed. The word says, my God will supply my needs. Amen. See, we have, to, we have to change our language. We, we need to learn to speak a new language. Now, I, I wanted to speak Spanish, but I would never apply myself. I never would apply myself. But that's why I don't speak Spanish today, because I didn't work at it or try to learn it. I wanted it. How many don't speak Spanish? You don't speak Spanish. Take your hands down. How many of you like to speak Spanish? Praise God. You know why we don't? Because we didn't apply ourselves. <laughs> Amen? The same principle works with God. When we are dealing with whatever we're dealing with, if we haven't been applying ourselves, to learn about who we are in Christ and learn about God's promises and know that God will back up his word, then when we are challenged with something, we don't have that quick response because we haven't studied properly or haven't received properly what we've heard from the word of God. Amen. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Calm down and stop running. So this is not about just coming to church once or twice or three times a week. It's not just about coming once in a while and getting in our, quote, time. It's not just about joining a church to say, well, I'm joining a church because I need somewhere to have membership in case I die. Pastor can bury me. <laughs> or if I have kids and grow up, it's a place that I can get my, my kids can get married. That's not what church is all about. That's, that's some of the benefits of being a church member. But the bottom line is what church is all about is have a man of God, a woman of God stand before you and give you and teach you the uncompromised word of God so that you can grow in the things of God so that you can conquer death, hell, and the grave like Jesus has already conquered for you. But to understand you already conquered all these problems. Not letting the cares of this life. People said, cast the whole of your care on the Lord. Why? Because the Lord's taking care of it already. Thank you, Lord. Peter says, cast the whole of your care on the Lord. Roll it on God. The Greek says, roll it like a ball away from you. Amen. And we call ourselves rolling it away from us many times, but before it gets to its destination, we run and get it back. I can see some of you now. You roll that ball, and, and, uh, the care of life, you roll it, and it goes, whoa, 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 whoa. I can't let it all go. Hold on. <laughs> because we still worry. We still fret. We still care. 
We all have opportunity to do that. I don't care how much we know. We all have that opportunity. But see, you've got to know, I'm going to cast it on the, the Lord, even though my mind may be still giving me a fit, but I know the promises of God. I know what God's word says. I, those, those thoughts come in my mind. That's not God's thoughts. That's how you conquer life. That's how you live victorious. It's to know that when anything negative comes to your mind, you're not going to speak it out. Say, hey, that's not God speaking to me. Any man come to you and say, well, well, you never mount anything. You never have nothing. You never prosper. Is that God's voice? No. Knowing the difference, didn't he say, my sheep hear my voice? My sheep hear my voice. The voice is knowing God's voice. The voice of the word is his voice. See, we're waiting to hear something out here. I'm hearing, I want to hear something audible. God, if you would just give me a sign. Give me a sign, God. Blow out my right tire or something. Yeah, God, too, but sure you can get a better sign than that. Maybe crack a view view mirror or something. I remember back at, in the Baptist church years ago when I got, first got saved, you know, I didn't know nothing about the word or nothing. And I, I heard the preachers preach on fleecing God, fleecing God. So whatever you hear is what you become. Faith com comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing. Faith comes by what you are hearing. And you have faith to whatever you're hearing. And, and so I was sitting one time in a communion service and they had uh, they had the stained glass windows on both sides of the church and little seals there. They had the candles in the windows and both sides. And, and I don't know what I was believing God for. I don't know what I was praying about. But I remember this. I said, Lord, I was sitting, I was sitting right in this section here. And I look over there. I said, now, not the first candle, but blow out the second candle. <laughs> and then, then I, I, know I'm, I know I was asking about a certain thing. I said, now, if you want me to really do this, let that second candle go out. Boy, I'm so glad the door didn't open. The wind came in and blew them all out. <laughs> I would really be confused then. So you don't fleece God. Amen. You don't fleece God. Direction comes from the Word. Amen. I said direction comes from the Holy Ghost, the Word of God. Yes. And we need to stick with that Word. Now, you know, I believe in prophecy. I believe in tongues, interpretations, gifts of the Spirit. I believe in all that. I believe in giving a word. Someone, as God lays it on my heart to do and give instructions to give someone a word. I believe in all that. But if this pastor ever gives you a word, don't run out the front door and go, oh, bless God, I got a word for them. You better go home and pray. Amen. See if God's already been talking to you about that. Just don't run on that. Now, if God's already been talking to you about that and it's a word of confirmation, then you still need to pray on that. Right. Amen. Amen. Still need to pray on that. Because a lot of people have gotten in trouble before. There are people that have prophesied your ladies, your diamond rings right off of your finger. God spoke to me and said, you're supposed to give me that diamond ring. Some, sometime way back, somebody prophesied something along those lines to me. I said, God, he talked to me yet. I know what it was. It wasn't about a ring. It was in this church when we first started. Had someone come to me uh, before church. I was out before church on a Sunday night service. Thank you, Holy Ghost. God's so good. Yes, Came to me after, uh, before Sunday night service and said, I'm a prophet of God. God called me to come tell you that I'm supposed to preach tonight. Uh -huh. I looked at him. Smile. I said, well, I, you know, I'm not saying you're not a prophet. I said, but God didn't tell me you were coming. <laughs> I, said, I said, I'm the pastor of this church. God didn't tell me you were coming. I said, why don't you just sit down and enjoy the service tonight? <laughs> and I got up here to preach, you know, and I didn't see him. Right. You know, when someone says, God said this, God said that, <laughs> yeah. well, you kind of watch that, you know. Because some people's lives, God changed his mind every day. God changes his mind every week. Amen. I like to say when the Holy Spirit is speaking to me, I like to say when the Holy Spirit spoke to me. The Holy Spirit is directing me. And if I missed it, I'll tell you I missed it. I'm not going to hold it back and say, look, you know, I got too much pride. And we just go right on into a missed situation. Thank God I've got enough, 
enough godly sense to realize that I need to repent and say, hey, we can't do that. But don't just jump on someone because they, they give you a word, you even prophesy over you. Now it's good they can do that, and, and it may be a wonderful prophecy, it may be right on target, but go pray on it first. Amen. Go, go pray on it, meditate on it, write it down. Amen. Amen. How'd I get off on that? That's one of those little rabbit trails. He said, I'll give you authority. We have authority. Even when someone comes to us, and, and, and tries to say certain things that we don't agree with, you have the authority to say no. Amen. You don't say yes just because they said, God told me. You have the same God in you. So if God's speaking to them, they're going to speak to you. God will speak to you by the Spirit. Amen. 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 People try to control people because they think they're, they're more in tune with God. And some people may be, only the reason for that is the, because they're listening a little bit better. But not everybody is really giving you the right instructions. So we need to understand that we do have authority over every demon, over all the enemy. Amen. Over all the enemy. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Let's go over here now to Matthew chapter 14. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 14. This is a story about Peter walking on the water. You, you've heard the story many times. Uh, but, but I just wanted to, to look at it this morning as Peter walks on this water. It says in verse 22, Matthew 14, immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him. Get into the boat and go before him. Now the word here, made, was actually the Greek word here means to invite strongly. Means to invite strongly. He didn't make them, he didn't force them, but he invited them strongly to get into the boat and go before him to the other side. While he sent the multitude away, and when he had sent the multitude away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. And when evening came, he was all alone there, but the boat was now in the middle of the sea. He put him in the boat, he left him in the boat. He left him in the boat, he went up to pray. And so when he came back, he saw the boat in the middle of the sea. And when the boat was now in the middle of the sea, uh, the, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Storm had come up. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the water. Everybody say walking on the water. Walking on the water. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled saying, is this a ghost? They still didn't really know him. But there was one in the boat that did. Huh? Is it the ghost? And they cried out for fear. They got in fear. They thought Jesus was a ghost because he spent some time in prayer. Glory of God was on him, walking on the water. Did something out of the ordinary. Did something out of the ordinary. Because you do something out of the ordinary, uh, some people uh, think maybe you're different. I'll just leave it at that word. But immediately, verse 27, Jesus spoke to them and said this, be of good, good cheer, don't be concerned, don't be afraid, it's I coming to you. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if this is you, command me to come to you on the order. What was Jesus supposed to say? No, this isn't me, Peter. He wasn't going to lie to Peter. Huh? So he said, come. And then when, when the word come here, he said, this is the son of God. Amen. I am the son of God. All he said was come. He didn't say, I am the son of God, then come on. No, he just said come. The moment he said come, he was identifying with the fact that he was the son of God. He was saying what Peter said about him. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Don't ever criticize Peter. He did walk on the water. A lot of people, most people, let's say, I don't know if anybody that's ever walked on the water, other than Jesus and Peter. Maybe some others. Maybe some of you have. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
But when he saw that the winds was boisterous, he was afraid. And notice here, when he saw the wind, wait a minute, didn't he see it before he stepped out on the water? And he cried out, said, Lord, he began to sink. He began to sink. He was walking on the water. He saw, now listen to me. Now he saw the wind. I was meditating. He saw the wind. He saw the waves, all the storms. He stepped out. But what happened was, as long as he kept his eyes on Jesus, Amen. he didn't see the storm. Amen. Now this is a good place right here to really get some revelation. Whatever you're going through in life, keep your eyes on the word. Amen. Because if you, see, if you keep your eyes on the word and got the revelation, the promises of God, you're not going to see the issues around you. Amen. You may see them in the natural, but see when you see the Heavenly Father, the blood of Jesus is always bigger than the issue. Amen. Huh? Listen to me now, because when Peter stepped out, he, he stepped out and got his eyes. And then how did he see? He looked around and began to, oh, it's a bad, it's a mess out here. He saw it. He was in the boat. The boat was rocking. Amen. Huh? The boat was rocking. Peter said, Jesus said, Come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried out saying, Lord, save me. Now notice when Jesus said, come, that was a promise. That was a promise. Peter kind of doubted the promise because he said, I was sinking. Then he said, Lord, save me. He lost the fact that he could continue to walk on the water, but he didn't thank God. He didn't lose the fact that God, Jesus wouldn't reach out and save him. Amen. Sometimes we lose focus in some areas of our life. But remember this, when you, when, when you miss it and you start sinking in some areas in your life, just remember this, Jesus is right there ready to just get you back up on the water. Get you back on top. Amen. So always remember that. So you may miss it. You may be sinking a little bit, maybe sinking in, 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 in challenges financially or sickness, disease, or family, whatever it may be in life, your job, whatever it may be. You may be sinking a little bit. But just remember, Jesus is standing there saying, I like that, don't you? Because I can't walk when I'm holding my hand. I can't walk. I got him holding my hand. He's always there. I said, he's always there. I said, he's always there. And, and verse 31 says, immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, oh, you little faith. He didn't say he didn't have any faith. He didn't say he didn't have no faith. He said, oh, you little faith. Why did you doubt? Jesus was actually saying there was no excuse for you doubting. But even though you didn't have an excuse for doubting, I was still here for you. Amen. He says, you still missed it, but I'm here for you. Amen. I'm here for you. He tells us the same thing. Peter, just for a moment there, forgot the promise. What was the promise? Come. That was the promise. One word. Jesus said, come. Peter started out walking. He had the promise from God. He started out. He took his eyes off of the promise. But the promise, listen, never took his eyes off of Peter. Amen. You need to get a hold of that now. Because, see, you may take your eyes off the promise, but the promise will never take his eyes off of you. Isn't it awesome to know that you still have all the promises of God? You all have the promises of God working on your behalf? Man, that's a good thing. Oh, that's a good thing. Because so many times we, we miss it in life and sometimes in life we say, well, I blew it and God don't love me or uh, God, my promise won't never be fulfilled and I blew it, I messed all up. But see, God didn't say, I'm taking the promises away from you. 
He never said that. Nowhere in the word, he said, I'll take them away from you. It can be delayed, but not taken away. And so while they're being delayed sometimes, Satan will come along and say, God don't love you. God don't care about you. Then you need to say, that ain't God talking to me. Because when I read the word, he tells me, I love you. I went to, to the cross for you. I suffered for you. I suffered my body for you. I took all this pain and agony for you. I went to hell for you. Glory to God. I did everything. I did all this for you. I, I left the I left the kingdom of heaven. I was seated already at the right hand side of the Father. I left my Father Amen. to come here. Amen. To set man free. You know the scripture that says he became poor? See, when we think about the word poor, we think about being broke. See, he became poor. Think about that now. Remember, the scripture talks about we did in Isaiah, the, the camels that, that the wise men traveled in, in caravans of, of 50 to 100 camels and wasn't the three camels. It wasn't three camels. Three camels was not sufficient. When Jesus didn't get the, the, the wise men to come, it was the shepherds that came when he was born. Two years later, is when the wise men came in a caravan and brought this gold frankincense myrrh. Amen. 50 to 100 camels loaded down. Amen. Jesus had plenty. He had a treasure. His name was Judas. A treasure named Judas, and Judas was still out of the treasure. Sold out of the treasure. And you know why I believe Judas, this is my own personal thing, okay? You can write it down and just put pastor's own personal idea. <laughs> Jesus re betrayed, Peter betrayed Jesus because he thought that Jesus would do what he had done before, walk through the crowd, got to a cliff to be pushed off. He dis disappeared through the crowd. They couldn't kill him. So he thought, Peter thought, they really couldn't get him. I'm going to sell Jesus out with 30 pieces of silver. And I really think this is, this is me, okay? That the reason it was 30 pieces of silver, he's trying to replace what he has stolen out of the treasury. That's me. He stole it, trying to get it replaced. Because he really didn't believe Jesus would be taken wouldn't be taken. But it backfired on him because it was God's time Amen. to fulfill the promise. What looked bad, what looked really bad, at that moment, Jesus had been whipped and beaten and, and persecuted. And it looked bad, but it looked good. Amen. It looked sad, but it was rejoiceful. It was a joyful time. Even though the Father, when Jesus was on the cross, and, 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 and we're going to talk more about that later. It, when Jesus was on the cross, uh, uh, when he was taking the sins, not just my sins, not just your sins, Alan, not just your sins, Jason, not just your sins, Skip or Carolyn, it's not just your sins, the whole world. Amen. Can you imagine how, have you ever felt bad being a Christian? Have you ever felt bad when you made a mistake? I mean, you just felt Lucky? What does that mean? Look that up in the Greek. <laughs> just felt really ucky. Just feel just, man, I wish I hadn't done that. I feel, man, I feel bad. Just, I mean, when spouses just have a little disagreement, you know, uh, maybe throw one or two sauces at each other, but. <laughs> and, and you kind of feel bad because you, you, you got real loud and you screamed at each other for just, just not long, not long. Maybe 30 seconds. It's got it short for some people, but anyway. <laughs> then you felt so bad. Can you imagine Jesus taking all, and, and sometimes when you got sick, how bad you feel? Being attacked with the flu or some disease or something, you felt so bad. I mean, you, you lose all the energy. When I went to that issue a year and a half, year and a half ago, I went to the issue, and when I got to the hospital, 
Man, I was weak. You heard me say this. I was so weak. I got home and, and I really didn't have a full mirror in the hospital. And, and I got home, I looked in the full mirror. I looked like a wet, dried up chicken. <laughs> you, you seen, I've, I've been to Israel, I've seen these chickens, they hang in the, in, in, in the marketplace. Got these long necks, they got a long neck on them. And what little muscle I did have when I went in, it, it, it dropped. I, I, I could do this and just flap. I could slap hands. Like, I could clap hands like this. <laughs> but the promises. Jesus took it all. Everything. All of our pain, sickness, disease, he took it all. Aren't you thankful? I said, aren't you thankful? Hallelujah. Jesus said, Peter says, is that you, Lord? He didn't, Jesus didn't get out his identification card and say, let me check and see. <laughs> he said, all he said was come. Amen. That was enough to identify. That's right. When Jesus stepped out, he stepped out on the word come. Amen. But for a moment, took his eyes off of everything, off of the glory, off of the word, off of the promises. But God's promises will never fail. Amen. Never fail. Yes. You, now what Peter did, remember what I said a moment ago, Peter fell the promise, but the promise didn't fail him because the promise had a hand. Amen. Let's everybody stand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, the promise had a hand. Always remember that. I beg you to remember that. I'm not just trying to sell you CDs, but get that. Listen to it over. Take some notes down because you can't receive everything I said this morning in about 45, 50 minutes. Didn't know I was going that long. Thank you for your patience. But God is good. Promises will never leave you. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you this morning for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the word, the word, the promises of God are yes and amen. God is not a man that he can lie. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Oh, that we serve an awesome God. Oh, we serve an awesome God, a powerful God, a wonderful God, a loving God, a caring God, that you have multiplied mercy and grace to us. Lord, we see how good God is. His promises, oh, His promises, right from the beginning, when Adam and Eve messed up, God didn't waste no time. He put in Genesis 3, 15, 16, I'm gonna bruise the devil's head. I'm gonna bruise his head. Hallelujah. Thank you for the promises, Lord, that we have today. And those promises are living alive and visible on the inside of us today. In Jesus' mighty name. While every head is bowed and every eye is closed, you know that you're born again. You know how you have the blood of Jesus has washed your sins. You have received him as your Lord and Savior. Raise your hands of testimony. Raise it up high. Raise it up high. I'm gonna raise it up high. Let me look over this church. Oh, somebody shout, I thank God. I've been born again by the blood of Jesus. Take your hand down. If you could not, lift your hand. God's promises are yes and amen. He said in his word that if you ask believing when you pray, you shall receive. And I want to pray for you this morning. If you've never been born again, or maybe you're a backslider, you've kind of drifted away, not here to condemn you, here to love you and encourage you this morning. Here to love you and encourage you. Lift your hand for prayer right now. Anyone, anywhere, lift it up, take it right back down. Just lift it up, take it right back down. Anyone, anywhere. Father God, we thank you also for those watching. Yes, God bless you. There's a hand lifted. Thank you for helping me. I didn't see that. 
Someone else. Give you, give you a little time. There, there are several here that needs to lift your hand for prayer on rededication for sure. Maybe some for salvation for the first time. Anyone else? Anyone else? Real quickly. Raise your hand. Anyone else? Anyone else? For those of you that raised your hands, lifted your hand for prayer, whatever it may have been, for salvation, rededication, or even for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I'm going to pray for you this morning before you leave. Would you get your Bible, get your belongings, and come right down here to the altar? I want to pray for you real quickly. Not going to embarrass you, but I want to pray for you this morning. Just come on. Come on. That word, come. 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 He has. Yes, he has. Thank you, Jesus. We're waiting. Anyone anywhere? Get ready to close it out. Praise you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Let me, let me read you your blessings here out of Deuteronomy chapter 6. I mean, Numbers, excuse me. Numbers chapter 6, verse 22. I want to bless you this morning according to the priestly blessing. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Speak to Aaron and his son saying, This is the way you shall bless the children of Israel and the children of God. Say to them, now I'm going to say to you right now, the Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon your life and may the Lord be gracious, favorable unto you. And the Lord lifts up his countenance upon you, his presence to be upon you in a mighty way and give you total peace and joy and happiness all the days of your life. Be blessed this week. Supernatural doors are opening for you. Things are happening to you in the spirit, saith the Lord of glory. Be expecting the move of God on your job. Be expecting the move of God in your family. Be expecting the move of God in your finances. Be expecting the move of God in your body. Expect the divine nature of the almighty God to move supernaturally in your life. This is going to be an awesome week. I said, awesome week. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you. We love you. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.